world. My name is Rihanna Dillon, and we are coming live from London. I am joined by one of the stars of the biggest hit of the summer, I'm assuming it's going to be. Actor Jeremy so. Irvine, <laughs> starring in Mamma Mia. Thanks, Thank you. If you've got any questions for Jeremy, do tweet us at Build Series LDN or post them in the video below if you're watching on Facebook, and we will do our best to get them to Jeremy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, so you're starring in Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Yes, here we go again. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the film. Uh, well, it's a sort of... Um, uh, it, it, it's got its own storyline with the original cast, mm -hmm. uh, still sort of picking up from, from where they left off. Um, but also we go back in time and we see sort of where Meryl Streep's character Donna, uh, now played by Lily James, um, had the sort of story of how she meets these three very different uh, guys mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, and how it all leads to a night of passion with each of them. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we might see a little bit of the, the build-up to the night of passion with your character and Lily James. Excellent. Let's have a look. Okay, so give us a clue as to what's happening in that clip. Um, what's happening in that clip? Uh, they've sort of, I mean, uh, my character Sam and Donna's sort of story there is, I guess it's the sort of the real sort of genuine um, sort of falling in love connection of, of the three guys. Um, but he has a reason that he can't, he can't stay with her. Um, so there's this sort of, yeah, sort of inner, um, yeah, sort of battle going on within within him as to whether he should tell her or not. It's yeah. truly heartbreaking, actually. It's uh, very emotional. You've got a very emotional <laughs> scene, yeah. um, and you're taking on a character that already exists in the Mamma Mia universe, Sam, who is played by Piers Brosnan. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the present day, so tell me about having to be a younger Piers Brosnan because your <laughs> accent in this is so spot on. It's brilliant. Oh, well, thank you. That's my uh, Piers impression sorted for the next so <laughs> yeah, many years. Um, your party piece. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, mean, I mean, A, it's incredibly daunting. It's very flattering. I mean, you know, Piers, I'm 28, and Piers was my bond, you know, growing up. So, you know, that's... Uh, it's always, I mean, this movie, more than, you know, a lot of other films I've ever done, in terms of walking on and there being the number of sort of A-list sort of stars who you've grown up admiring their work and, uh, and things like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's daunting. But on the flip side, you couldn't have had a group of nicer people to sort mm -hmm. of welcome you and make you, make you feel like an equal. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's really important on a film set because you are all there to make, you know, to try and make a good movie. You know, you're, you're not there for... Jeremy to have his little fangirl moment <laughs> over Pierce, you know? Did that Which, happen though? Oh, of course it did. Of course it did. But, um, <laughs> How did that come out? I, I, I sort of managed, I think, to hold this together quite well. Pierce was like really lovely and the, the first day on set that we were still in prep, but the first day that he, um, he and me were both in the studios together, you know, he brought me into his dressing room and we just sort of sat oh. there for an hour, drank, you know, drinking tea and chatting and stuff and then it's great. Like we we really all did go out for dinner like most nights mm -hmm. when on this island which we're all filming on. So by the end of it, it was like being on holiday with all your mates, and uh, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> so did you study him? Did you kind of study his films beforehand? Like how did you do the accent? Um, I'm how's that? How do you, how you do the accent? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is Pierce's now going to a creep, but I think you know it's a lot of you. You know, you find a couple of interviews. I mean, I didn't want to do Pierce. As he is now, I wanted to look at Pierce when you know when he was the age I'm sort of meant to be playing him, and mm -hmm. found a couple of interviews and you know watched them until I could repeat them backwards, oh, and wow. uh, and you sort of yeah you sort of do a lot of yeah you know, sort of playing around with it. But I, I've, I've always really enjoyed doing accents for for films because it's a really good way of getting into character, mm -hmm. you know. Because when you're filming for anyone who hasn't been on a movie set, um, you're filming different sections in a completely random order depending on. The, the sets and the lighting and all that sort of stuff. So it's very difficult to suddenly get yourself into character. Um, so I quite like using an accent. You know, suddenly you go, oh, no, no, you sort of <laughs> see we're sort of pierced, you know, and, uh, and that's sort of, and you're back in. <laughs> Love it. Um, so obviously you've mentioned Bond. What is your favourite Piers Brosnan movie? Um, I think I think myself and every guy my age and girls probably, it's... Uh, is Goldeneye, mm -hmm. and, then, and then hours spent playing the uh, Nintendo game oh, yeah. after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I, yeah. I mean, I love him in Mr. Doubtfire. I mean, that's a... Yeah, that'd that's be great as well. One. Yeah, yeah, no, there's, there's a long list. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brogan Wilson has sent in a question mm. on the Build Series website. She's oh, asked, Brogan. what is it like working with Stellan Skarsgård, who I've met and is a lovely, lovely guy? Stellan's great, isn't he? Stellan's, he just... 
oozes this charm. It's actually the second time I've worked with Stern. I, I played the young Colin Firth in a movie yes. uh, not too long ago called The Railway Man, which Stern was also in. And uh, he's just got this, I don't know, there's this sort of twinkle in Stellan's eye that's... Uh, you just watch people sort of swoon, swoon around him. Which <laughs> really? Is, uh, yeah, yeah. And he, he knows it. He just oozes it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll get on to The Railway Man in a minute because I want to mm. talk a bit more about that. But yeah. there are, like you said, so many legends in this movie. Pretty much everybody is just an incredible star. Who were you sort of most excited about meeting or intimidated by? Um, I think it's something about meeting act. You know, I mean... It's, it, yeah, I've been very, very lucky the last sort of, uh, sort of seven or eight years or however I've been doing this to meet a lot of actors. And, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of I kind of know what actors do and you sort of, you, can, you know, I kind of have some sort of understanding of that world. So when you get to meet musicians yeah. in a world which I, I, you know, I don't have that that sort of part of my brain for that. Um, so that's the sort of thing that I, I become completely starstruck <laughs> um, with uh, musicians and sports people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, Benny Anderson and... Bjorn from um, from ABBA and, and then Cher comes on set. Oh my God! And, what know, was the day to... like when Cher came on set? It's nuts because you have like <laughs> uh, you have everyone, the whole cast there. You got Meryl and the whole lot of us do this big end number basically. And uh, the director um, has a microphone like this, mm -hmm. and which is connected to a PA system like we have in here over the whole studio. And because there's like three hundred dancers and you know five hundred crew, and you know there's, there's like a thousand people in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so all you're hearing over the microphone is, and could uh, Cher just step to the left? And that's great. And Meryl, <laughs> Meryl, just a bit to the right. And right, Pierce and Colin, you're fine. And, you know, you're hearing these names that you've kind of grown up with. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a pinch yourself sort of <laughs> moment. But, uh, yeah, it's good fun. How did the choreography, you know, work for you? Were you quite mm. up for doing, like, those big dance numbers? Was it? I was kind of... very up for doing a big dance number. I think you, when people see the movie, you'll notice all my dancing has been suspiciously cut. <laughs> So uh, I think oh, there was there was a weak link there, <laughs> and I was up against a lot of like really good dancers, uh, Lily and Josh and that lot. And I have I've got two left feet and kind of just look like a a baby giraffe. Um, but if Pierce was also doing that, then that would work, right? They, the dads, yeah. No, I mean I could see Pierce and Colin and Stellan. I watched them rehearsing for. Yeah, a good couple of hours for simply sitting down on a stool, I think, and raising a glass <laughs> in time. So I definitely, but I, I still think I, I take the biscuit. There's, a, there's an amazing bit where we all march to camera and everyone marches to camera in time and I'm <laughs> plodding along at the back. But um, I don't know, they've left it in. So. <laughs> um, what did you get up to? You said you went out for dinner and stuff, but you're on like this mm. incredible island filming, presumably. So Yeah, no, the whole thing was a, it was, well, I mean, the whole thing was a joke. I mean, we just kind of... Uh, that you get paid to do this. Oh, it was outrageous, absolutely <laughs> outrageous. So we get, I mean, you know, we come out, we're all on the same island, we're all living in this little town, and, uh, you know, I'd come out of my villa and wander down to the beach, and a speedboat would pull up, and Colin Firth and Pierce Brosnan would get off that, and I'd get on it, and then it would take me to set, and, you know, speedboats to set and things. It's not, um, it's, it's something, it's another world. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good fun. But, you know, it's that sort of thing that I think actually translates into the movie mm -hmm. on the screen. You know, a lot of people, since I've you know got the job, a lot of people come up to me and be like, "Oh, you don't mind me? That's my like that's my movie when I'm stressed. That's yeah. my hangover movie, you know, or something like that." Because it's that like two hours of just like escape to this kind of dreamy, beautiful world of sunshine and beaches and dancing, and it's just there. Uh, and that's that's honestly what it was like to film. Yeah. What was your favourite moment? Tina on Twitter has asked filming. Favorite moment filming. Um, I loved. I love just. I love the sea. I love just like just filming around the sea is mm. just great. Um, we had a lot of fun. I mean, the final end number. We're all in the most ridiculous outfits. We're in these kind of um, yeah skin tight sequin spandex. Very skin with, tight. Yes, very very <laughs> revealing, and uh, you know sort of platform shoes and flares and there's a real competition with the boys as to what we could get away with stuffing down our trousers um which um yeah i think dominic cooper really <laughs> really excelled at to the point of i can't believe no one stopped him but um it's uh, that's something to look out for yeah so that was good fun but no we all just had a laugh you know there's lots of like a lot of practical jokes going on yeah. i sort of pride myself in liking to uh yeah try and try and wind people up early on so i did a few which then got 
pull back on me. I like to. I like to like do things. What? What well, they do, do things like. Uh, I'd say, <laughs> this is now going to warn everyone who I next go work. But like, when they make, um, you get given rewrites often mm -hmm. in the morning um, when a, a scene's being rewritten or whatever. So I like to write fake rewrites. So I wrote a really lovely. There's a lovely scene in the movie where. Um, uh, uh, Hugh Skinner and Lily James, Colin Firth's character, and Lily wake up in bed together, and the scene sort of starts there, and it's a bit awkward. I rewrote that scene where we started a little earlier in that in that scene. <laughs> Gary Sherman, you know, Hugh Skinner starts panicking, going, "I, I can't, I can't, I can't, gosh, you know, no, I, I can't, I can't do that, I can't, I can't do that. I'm gonna have to go." And, so he goes and talks to the director, <laughs> who you know doesn't know if this has come from the producers or whatever, so they don't really want to say anything. It's, uh, <laughs> so that's good. But then they had me, so they told me that I... And everyone was involved in this. Pierce Brosnan was involved in this, everyone. They told me that it was tradition of a Mamma Mia movie that at the rap party, each member of the cast gets up and performs a 30-second uh, a routine to their favourite ABBA song. Oh, my God. And I start freaking out. They tell me this. I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? I'm, <laughs> and I'm, 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 like, I'm serious. Like, I'm phoning agents. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not, not happy with this. It's two days till the party, and everyone else seems to have known and known this for a month. They've got mm -hmm. routines prepared. <laughs> So I kick off. I'm going, there's no, there's just no way I'm doing this. So they go, all right, Jeremy, we'll, look, we'll get you the choreographer to come and do something with you. So they get the choreographer. They oh get backing God. dancers. Oh, my God. They get God. everything to it. And they told me that I did a song. They said the only song that hasn't been chosen yet is Abba, a song by Ava involving an eagle. And they want me to do an eagle dance. <laughs> and so they teach me this whole thing yes. and film it. And it gets, uh, yeah, so I made a right tit of myself. <laughs> <laughs> is there actually video footage of that somewhere? There is. I'm amazed that Lily hasn't 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 sent that I to someone. I am so going to yeah, try and get around. hold of this. <laughs> um, have you always been into musicals? Uh, no, no, no. My first ever job was working sort of. I sort of worked during a summer backstage at um, Phantom of the Opera. But, oh wow! Um, but no, it's not. Um, mostly because I've never sort of had the confidence to think that I could go and do it myself, and then. I mean, the reason, the reason that I, you know, did go and do it was Old Parker, the director of this one, who's also written it, who you might know from, uh, he wrote all the sort of exotic Marigold Hotel mm -hmm. movies, but he also directed my second ever movie that was also his second movie um, called Now Is Good. And it was the sort of the movie that I did after, uh, after War Horse. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of, you know, very, very sort of nervous and, and sort of, unsure of myself then and he was really sort of supportive and real sort of paternal figure during that and um so he was the one who sort of I think gave me the confidence to actually yeah to come and do this yeah if you did get to choose the other song that you would have done a routine to or karaoke which would it have been <laughs> I think Dancing Queen's gonna be everyone's favorite isn't that <laughs> yes, great it's a pretty good <laughs> yeah. pretty good one um so you mentioned playing a younger version of Colin Firth in the Railway mm. Children played a younger Railway Man, but yes sorry the Railway, Railway Children was the prequel Railway Children is just my favorite <laughs> film ever, sorry, <laughs> the railway man. Yeah, yeah. Um, who would you like to play a younger version of next? Who would be the most fun oh, to do gosh, another I impression don't know. of? I don't know. I quite like doing voices. I kind of want another accent, I think. Stellan. Quite fun to do. do yeah, the Stellan. trio. Yeah, you may have to do another one. No, I think Josh Dillon did quite a good job of that. I don't think I, I can follow it, but um, I don't know. I, just, I mean, look, there's so many actors that I look up to. Mm -hmm. and I've, you know, I've been, I've been so, so lucky the last sort of years to work with a lot of the people who I grew up admiring and the people that I sort of got into this industry because of, you know, some yeah. of their work and things. So, uh, yeah, so there's, there's a long list. Yeah. Um, we've had a question in on Facebook from Astrid who's asked, if you were asked to play in Fallen 2... Would you do it? How was your experience on the first one? Uh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Pass on that one. <laughs> uh, um, what has been the biggest challenge in your career so far? Um, biggest challenge? I think... I, th I don't know. I think, I think the, main, the main battle with acting is your... You are your business. You know, you are your thing. So the main thing is... is never letting that sort of um that nagging voice of doubt get in your head you know and i'd say to anyone who's who's getting into acting you're going to be told no 50 times more than you're ever going to be told yes yeah. i mean for every job that you get you've you know you ha you probably haven't got you know 50 or 100 jobs you know whatever so it's um yeah i think that's the that's the sort of biggest challenge is just you know and and being confident in your choices and uh and remembering that it's all just a laugh. I mean, this is what this movie was so great yeah. for. You know, it's just, it's very easy to um, 
get caught up in this industry. You know, if it's an industry that gets a lot of press attention and stuff like that, and you can start to think that what you're doing is, is you know, I don't know, brain surgery or something like that, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. whereas, you know... Um, you're entertaining. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you're doing that and just to have a laugh with it. Yeah. And, uh, and keep positive, yeah. Um, I think we've got a couple of questions from the audience, actually. We've Ooh. got one at the back, like. please. Hi, Hi, Jeremy. Hi. Um, how was it learning to ride when you were cast for War Horse? <laughs> um, well, I'd gone in with such, I mean, audac aud audacity, but yeah, sort of complete audacity of lying through my teeth saying that I could ride a horse. <laughs> I actually thought, I thought every actor is going to say they can ride a horse. So I said I grew up in a stable and um, <laughs> didn't, have, didn't have a clue. What so you do. didn't grow up in a stable? <laughs> Did I be joking? No, I've never, never been on a horse. So um, uh, how was it? It was a very, very, very steep learning curve. But there's a wonderful um, riding school where all the film horses basically come from uh, this amazing farm near Rickmansworth where they've got you know, these, these horses have got longer CVs than, <laughs> than uh, a lot of actors. And um, they have these Spanish uh, sort of stunt riders who, who teach you um, they don't speak a word of English, but you kind of you get the idea, and they they you know they beat you up for, for three weeks, and you come out <laughs> sort of man. respectable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it did. Um, yeah, I've kind of learned maybe not to uh, not to lie quite so much when trying to get work because it does come around to bite you. And that one did with another practical joke, but I don't know if that's suitable for here. But anyway, oh, get it from <laughs> later. Um, we've got another question from Karis at the front. Hi. Um, you play a young Piers Brosnan in the new film on Mia. Mm. Who would play a young version of you? Oh. Young version of me? Do you know what? I don't... Uh, Christ, I mean, do you have any suggestions? Like, who, like, who do you think? Like, Tom Holland, maybe? Tom Holland? <laughs> I think Tom Holland's done something terribly wrong if he's suddenly playing the young me. Um, I think his career's going to be just fine. Um, <laughs> Haven't you already had a young you? Oh, sorry, I have. Yeah, no, my little brother. Your little, little brother was. Yeah, you? so my yeah. little brother played the young me in Great Expectations, and actually, I would, I'm not just saying this because he's my young brother. I, I thought he was, he was a lot better than me. He was, um, <laughs> yeah, he was really, really good in it. And then, thank God, didn't want to go into acting, <laughs> so I can keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so tell us about uh, the projects that you've got coming up. Um, you've got Billionaires mm. Boys Club. Yeah, yeah, that should be uh, fine. I think that's coming out. Next month, some points. That's like Taryn Edgerton, Ansi Ogle, um, Emma Roberts. That's that's good fun. That's it's amazing. About a, about a group of uh, you know, really badly behaved rich kids in LA in the eighties doing a lot of drugs, and then they kind of set up a. Though they end up trying to con people in a Ponzi like pyramid scheme, mm -hmm. um, which all goes horribly wrong. Um, so that should be fun and. Yeah, what else have we got? A movie called Paradise Hills, again with Emma Roberts. Um, oh, amazing. It's really lovely people, and that's a sort of really odd um, sci-fi movie, um, which I think would definitely go down as sort of the weirdest thing I've done. It's about as far away from Mo Mia as you oh, can possibly really? go. Yeah. It's, uh, that's really, that's sort of dark and creepy, which would be cool. Nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's quite a few things coming out. Yeah, you yeah, sound incredibly busy. And you recently went to Calais uh, to volunteer for a non-profit organisation. Uh, yeah. So yeah, tell yeah. us about that. Um, sure, yeah, uh, there's a wonderful charity called um, Help for Refugees, and they sort of are the sort of real um, on the ground helping with the refugee crisis. And um, I think... The refugee crisis is now out of the press, but you've only got to go over there an hour on the train from London to realise just, you know, that, that, I mean, it's still just as much of a crisis as it was. I mean, mm -hmm. And the, sort of the really sad thing about it is um, since the camp or the jungle, as it was known, um, has been sort of evicted, um, these people... They, 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 they haven't gone anywhere. This Calais is always going to be the closest point to England. There are always going to be people there. And I'm not saying that I have a solution for how to, or anyone has a solution for how to fix that, but there are always going to be thousands of people at, at you know, this part. And now they're living rough with no amenities. And it's, um, it's something that I think uh, seems, to, seems to be being sort of made worse by the... Um, sort of French riot police who come along and confiscate all their tents. Oh. And we're talking about kids as well. I mean, this is a, there was sort of, yeah, there's something about 180 unaccompanied minors there at the moment. So kids on their own. So it's, uh, yeah. So I've been sort Sorry, of, remind us what the charity is called? It's called Help for Refugees. And there's also a lovely charity called uh, the Refugee Community Kitchen. Okay, so that's and how they, people yeah, can get involved. Fire. But yeah, I'd recommend anyone watching this who wants to go and volunteer for a day, two days, it's an hour on the train. And uh, yeah, go do it. 
Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I'm really sorry. Much. I'm afraid that is all we've got time for, Thank Jeremy. Um, but you can catch him in Mamma Mia. Here we go again in cinemas from July 20th. Um, let's give Jeremy a massive round of applause. Thank you for having me. Thank you.